This is peaceful Amish country in eastern Pennsylvania. Here, one expects humble citizens and life without modern conveniences. But one certainly doesn't expect a young woman to vanish without a trace. You know what I think happened? This guy comes along, sees her walking, and just kidnapped her. Now this gentle community is about to realize the horrors of human nature. It could be a hate crime. Are far worse than any modern marvel. She just fell right down onto the stones. Birthdays are such festive occasions. And for Lancaster mom, Carmen Potts, there's no better way to gather her flock. Birthdays are so important to us um, to celebrate another year, to get together, family time. Party preparations for Carmen's youngest daughter are well underway. But not everybody makes an appearance. Carmen's 24-year-old daughter, Christina Cologne, is strangely absent. When she did not come or call, I really thought something was wrong then. Like many a nervous parent before her, Carmen calls the Lancaster police. I took a call for a missing 24-year-old female. Most of the missing person reports so we get the individuals usually come home in less than a day. Sounds like this suburban mom is probably overreacting. Still, it's a slow weekend in sleepy Lancaster. So Officer Halstead decides to canvas the area. How you doing, sir? Hi. Have you seen this girl? but nobody seems to have seen Christina for days. We didn't have any luck with the canvas and getting information as to where Christina may have gone. Now, where could Christina be? Somehow, her sister Marlena, who knows her best, is not concerned. She was a free spirit and she did go wherever she pleased. So where did this free spirit run off to? Fortunately, Travis and Deb of the Pepper Lane Fudge Factory offer a few theories. Do you think maybe she's trying to disappear? I mean... You mean like running away? Yeah, and just making it look like somebody for yeah, whatever that's a, reason. That's a possibility. Um, maybe she had a boyfriend or something. Yeah, I have no idea. Over the Lancaster PD, Detective John Burkhart takes over what he hopes is still a missing persons case. And like any good cop, he begins by interviewing those who knew Christina best. One of the first things we did was look into relationships that she'd had at the current time or in the recent past. And right away we found out that Christina had been married and divorced. And not every marriage ends on good terms. Well, was this Freddie Leone? Her ex-husband was named Freddie Leone. We learned in their background that there had been some physical abuse by, by Freddie against Christina. Clearly there were bad feelings, but how deep did these feelings run? When we looked into Mr. Leone, we found out that he and Christina had very little contact since their divorce. Did absence make the heart grow fonder? Or did it simply cause Freddie's pent-up rage to boil over? We wanted to obviously check into him and, and find out his whereabouts at the time. And Freddie phones in some fast answers. So you were working all day? Freddie's alibi was that he was working or at home with his family every day during the time Christina was missing. With no real motive and a verified alibi, Freddie is ruled out as a suspect. But all is not lost. Patrol Officer Halstead is about to get an even juicier lead. I got a call for an abandoned vehicle, ran the registration on the vehicle, and found the vehicle to belong to Christina Colon. Christina's car has mysteriously turned up. Could it hold crucial clues to her whereabouts or her fate? We're going to need to have detectives come out here and check it out. It's only a matter of time till word of the find gets out into the neighborhood. Usually when they find a car and no owner, something bad happened. Any, any young woman who disappears is, is alarming. Detective Burkhardt has a bad feeling in his bones as well. One he quickly must share with Christina's parents. But the Colognes have a little something to share as well a shocking new lead. In going to Christina's parents and talking to them again, we learned that Christina had been involved in a relationship that um, Christina's parents had not told us about at first. Why so coy with police? Might they not have approved of this affair of the heart? Christina had been involved in a relationship with a woman named Bridget Grant that Christina had actually lived with for, I believe, four years. 
A lesbian relationship in Amish country? How very untraditional. They had a very close and intimate relationship and had broken up about one year prior. But was it really over? Or is that just the kind of white lie you tell mom and dad? Colleen and Sharon at the outhouse just can't get over the scandal of it all. I heard that she was involved in maybe a lesbian relationship. A lesbian relationship, wow. Yeah. Well, that really changes what? things. And, um, you know, around here, they don't take too finely to something like that. No. <laughs> so maybe they wanted to escape Not somewhere enough. else and just have it as, as a mystery, disappearance or something. Yeah. Maybe they staged it even. Maybe. But there's another dangerous possibility. In a town that values the more traditional lifestyle, could Christina have been the victim of good old-fashioned prejudice? I hate crime. It takes a lot to get model train gurus Greg and Tom's minds off the Great Northern Diesel. But talk of Christina Colon's disappearance and her scandalous lesbian relationship seems to be doing just that. You never know. It, it, it could be uh, a hate crime, you know, because... Uh, Anything can happen, you know, you're yeah. in Lancaster County here. As we've seen already, we are kind of a conservative area around here. But there's yet another possibility. Could Christina's former lover be involved with her disappearance? I considered Bridget Grant a possible suspect at that time. Investigators raced to meet with Christina's sapphic flame. When we went and talked to Bridget Grant, she was very alarmed, and um, she showed all the appropriate emotions that you would suspect of somebody that was truly concerned for her friend. But is she playing it straight? Or is Bridget just a closet thespian? It doesn't take long to find out. She had a very strong alibi, which was confirmed by her employer and other friends and, and a person that she was living with at the time. Investigators give Bridget a clean slate. But they continue to hit the streets looking for any clues at all. What we had to do at that point is canvas the area where the car was located, go to businesses, residents, and show her photograph and see if anybody had seen her. And there was still hope that Christina was just off somewhere by herself because she chose to do so. Have you seen her before? But when the latest search strikes out, investigators know they need to try something else. Back at the station, detectives take a closer look at the only evidence they have. Christina's abandoned car and the surprising items they found inside. When we looked through the car, we found her Pennsylvania identification, her ATM card that it appeared that she left behind in the car. Has Christina abandoned the modern world like some other Lancaster locals? Or could Christina have been kidnapped or worse? The inside of the car is not in disarray. It doesn't indicate that there was any kind of struggle inside the car. I'm thinking that maybe somebody she knows and maybe the family doesn't know um, wanted to meet her at this location. But just whom was she meeting? Investigators raced to Christina's apartment to conduct a thorough search for clues. It turns out that skeletons aren't all Christina kept in her closet. And we found some notes with uh, other people's names on them and um, that people that we looked into. One particular letter was from a man named Adrian Valentine, who was a friend of Christina's. What sort of friend might this be? Christina's mother thinks of Adrian like her own son. They were like best buddies. Even though they were in their 20s, uh, they were like two little children. They were like brother and sister almost. Oh, really? If that's the case, this must be one close family. And the letter he wrote her was pretty romantic. Adrian wanted to be involved in a relationship with her. But in, in the letter, he also acknowledged that he knew Christina did not want to be a, in a romantic relationship with him. Oof, rejection surely hurts. But could Adrian really harm the woman of his dreams? Judging by his final words in the letter, one does have to wonder. Adrian signed off saying that he had to go commit a, an assault on somebody. Adrian seems to have some serious anger issues. Have investigators found the man responsible for Christina's disappearance? You know, he could have got a little off his rocker and, you know, took her out. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe it was just something totally random. I'm sure the letter's going to be uh, 
really important for this crime. Tom, you're right on track. And the letter raised some red flags for us and that Adrian could be involved. But the case is about to take a most unexpected turn when an old friend of Christina's comes forward with some tantalizing information. Nothing captures the heart of a young woman quite like an old-fashioned love letter. But not all notes are filled with sweet nothings. A violently written letter from an unrequited lover has given Detective Burkhardt his most promising lead yet in Christina Cologne's disappearance. In the letter, in the last sentence uh, Adrian Valentine wrote, he wrote that he was going to go kick somebody's ass. But whose rear end was he after? Christina's, perhaps? At that point, we try to locate Adrian. Investigators conduct an all-out search, but are shocked to learn where Adrian rests his weary head and found that he was incarcerated at the time of Christina's disappearance. Clearly, Adrian's not the guy they're looking for. While detectives struggle with the latest setback, Nathaniel and Todd of the Intercourse Pretzel Company come up with some possible twists of their own. You know what I think happened? What do you think happened? She was on the internet. She found this guy, so she decided to run away with this guy. Maybe she was just going to work one night and her car ran out of gas. So she went, she was walking to the nearest gas station, and this guy comes along and kidnaps her. But do you think they'll ever find her? I don't know. These gossipy doughboys aren't the only ones fearing the worst for Christina. The longer somebody's missing, the more likely it is that foul play was involved. Local leads seem to be drying up, so police expand their search well beyond Lancaster city limits. We made contact with a young lady named Melissa Bowen, who was a very good friend of Christina's, but had moved from the area. But Melissa and Christina never lost touch. In fact, Christina told Melissa everything. And now Melissa's ready to drop a bombshell. Melissa Bowen told us that Christina was involved in a secret affair that, that nobody knew about. Another secret affair? Where does she find the time? And that the man that she was involved with was a married man that had children from this area. Oh no, surely that must be the end of this sordid tale. Christina was pregnant at that time with this man's child. Apparently not. But who is this mystery man? Melissa didn't really know who the man was, but she did know that he went by the name of John, which Melissa believed to be a fictitious name. Now investigators scramble to find information about this mysterious John. It proves to be surprisingly easy. Thank you. Luckily, Melissa Bowen had saved his telephone number on her cell phone after Christina had used her cell phone one time to call John. We did a reverse search on the telephone number, and we came up with the name of Damien Schlager. So John was a fake name. Investigators hightail it to Damien's house to bring this wayward husband in for questioning. But Damien plays it cool. During an interview with Damien Schlager, he denied that he had any romantic relationship with Christina. But Christina's friend Melissa provides police with plenty of evidence to the contrary. And Melissa told us that she had actually contacted Christina five days earlier, and she was very quick with Melissa on the phone and said she couldn't talk, she had to go. Melissa asked her, are you with your baby's father? And she said yes and hung up. And Melissa never spoke with Christina again. We realized that Damien was potentially the last person to be with her. Shocked by the latest news, fudge technicians Deb and Travis try to smooth out the story's rough edges. Yeah, I couldn't imagine why anybody would want to kill someone that was carrying a child. Yeah, and... maybe the guy wasn't going to support her and she got depressed and she's committed suicide and they just haven't found the body. With theories swirling around town, police still need more information. And they get it from Damien's wife, Lori Ann. In speaking with Lori Ann Schlager, we asked who some of Damien's friends were, and that's where the name Larry Harcum came up as being one of his friends. And Larry is oh so well known to police. I recognize the name as 
as a man that had been indicted federally uh, recently here in Lancaster for firearms violations. And luckily for police, Larry is in the mood for some negotiation. He brought up the possibility of him getting a lighter sentence for his charges if he would assist us in getting Damien Schlager to confess to the crime. Larry agrees to wear a wire to get the goods on Damien Schlager. My fear with Larry is he brings so much of his own baggage. For anxious Lancaster detectives, it all comes down to this. Yeah, it's maybe our last hope in this case is to, to get that confession. Sounds good. Will Larry bring home the bacon with sizzle? I was getting very nervous that we weren't going to get what we needed. Or will he fizzle as a suspected murderer walks free? Lancaster investigators have a risky plan to learn what happened to Christina Cologne. We met with um, Larry Harkum and asked him to meet with Damien Schlager and to wear a wire to record a conversation with Damien to see if he would tell Larry what had happened to Christina and where she was. Investigators know this could be the only chance to find Christina Cologne dead or alive. I just prayed in my heart. Oh, God, I hope this is not one of those cases where the boyfriend takes out the girl and he, he ends up killing her. To find out what happened to Christina, investigators move forward with their plan. Larry Harkin drove his own vehicle to the convenience store. We followed in a surveillance van. We parked the surveillance van in that area and watched as they drove off about a half a block away from us and then stopped and got out of their vehicles. Larry and Damien go for a walk, and quickly, the plan begins to crumble. Yes, sir, if you have a gun on your car, no. What's all that noise? Why is there so much interference with that? When the recording first started, there was so much background noise. There's so much just garbled noise. I was extremely frustrated because I didn't know if we would get another chance with this kind of meeting. I don't want to lose this. Their tiny window of opportunity is closing fast. But then, just in the nick of time, Larry comes through big time. They stopped walking, and the recordings became very, very clear. And we could hear everything that was being said by both Harcum and Damien Schlager. Larry convinces Damien that he can make Damien's problems and Christina's body disappear with a little bit of help. Don't have me out in the forest somewhere trying to find his body. You know what I'm saying? All right, listen, don't record it. Corey. Corey. Damien kindly offers up the location of Christina's body. Then, right on cue, he makes the ultimate confession. I shot her and she just fell right down onto the stones. Damien Schlager admitted that he had taken Christina Cologne to a place that he called Delta Quarry. Took her there to show her something and then shot her. Another killer done in by his own big mouth. For investigators, Damien's confession is bittersweet. We were going to get the guy that, that was responsible for this, but we also realized for certain that Christina Cologne was dead. We're good. Let's get down to that quarry. With Damien's detailed directions in hand, investigators head out to Delta Quarry to recover the body. We followed his directions, in which he talked about a spring, and finding the end of the, the lake. And in that, in that exact location, we found the body of Christina Colon. Christina has been shot in the head and left out in the open. The medical examiner determines she's been dead for two weeks. For Christina's mother, it's the news she dreaded most. It's, um, it's like your heart is just plucked out of your chest. You don't know how you're going to go on with your life. It's just horrible. The vendors down at the Lancaster Farmer's Market are equally horrified. I, I just can't even believe it happened here. Well, a lot of people think, oh, we're in bucolic, beautiful Lancaster County. You know, we have all these nice fields, the Amish. Everyone seems so friendly. Things happen everywhere. But murder? Damien Schlager is arrested and charged with two counts of first-degree murder. Damien pleads innocent, but the jury doesn't buy it. He was the father of her unborn child. He did not want to tell his wife about the affair, and he felt that the only way out of it was to kill her. 
Damien is convicted and sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Christina and her unborn child. The verdict in town is equally swift. On one hand, you can kind of think of, you know, crimes of passion. You hear about it all the time, right? But to kill your baby? I mean, come on. What kind of person does something like that? I, I say fry him, to be quite honest with you. I think for an eye, an eye for an eye here. Christina's sister Marlena must now face a life without her sister. I will always love her and I miss her so dearly. But Christina's memory will live on. I recently had a baby and I named her Christina Joyce. I love her. The dream to live in a simpler, kinder society is certainly a noble one. But as the families here in Lancaster have learned, human nature can be far more terrible than any modern convenience. <laughs>